Morning viewers and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Paul is away in Dubai following the racing festival. So joining me today is our super sub and many Rangers League winner, Gavin Radford. Gab, thanks for coming in. Morning, Budge. Good to be here. Uh, I think we got some nice bets for the guys this weekend. Uh, let's hope so, you know. We start off as usual with our track and ball sponsored last one standing competitions. Our soccer competition starts again after a two-week break due to international commitments in the FA Cup. We have 70 entries remaining. Gav, we've got a couple still going. I'm going quite strong. Well, I believe I'm going quite strong. I've got two picks to go. Okay. Um, I'm leaning towards Arsenal this weekend. I think they've got a, a game against Stoke. I think that Arsenal team should be too strong for them. Yeah, they do look good things. On to our rugby competition. Last week we had four entries, namely Methan Harrell, Tony Barrett, Gavin Radford sitting next to me, and Wayne Francis. Sadly, Wayne and uh, Gavin were on the Sharks, who just never turned up. Gav, thoughts? Very sad day. Trying to be, trying to be loyal to the brand, the Sharks, yeah. local boy. I uh, got caught too much up in the, in the game itself. Yeah. Paid the price. Yeah, not good enough. So, Methan, Tony, you've got the spreads. Good luck, guys. And we'll have them available for everybody tomorrow. We're going to have a look at the rugby spreads for the weekend. We'll go through it quickly and uh, give our views on it. Uh, the first game up is the Chiefs Highlanders. Highlanders, at home, outstanding team. Can they upset the Chiefs in Hamilton? Very good, very good game. I mean, what the two New Zealand teams playing each other, it's like test match intensity. And I think yeah. this is another one of those great New Zealand games. Chiefs home ground advantage. Highlanders just slightly off the pace away from home. Yeah. Uh, this, I think the spread is right at one, two points. I think the Chiefs will just shade it. Yeah, I think it's a good game to watch, not to get a bet on. No, I think this is a good thing. I think the Hurricanes will murder the Rebels. Dry mm -hmm. conditions. Ten and a half is a big spread, especially away from home, but... You've got a free-scoring Hurricanes team. I mean, the Barrett boys are playing extremely well. Yeah. The Rebels, they fell apart against uh, the Waratahs a week ago. Yeah. I think the Hurricanes will be too strong. You want a team that can score tries, and this is a team that can score tries. Yeah. Now, on to uh, the one I don't think I'll be watching, the Blues against the Sharks. Any chance the Sharks can come back? If the form book's anything to go by, the Sharks have very little chance of winning this game. I think the Blues... Showed against the Lions in South Africa that she can't underestimate them. They can yeah. score from anywhere. They've got some potential strikers out wide. Yeah. And I think if they get the ball out wide, the Sharks in for a long day again. Yeah. Next game, the Aussie derby. Waratahs upset the Brumbies, especially in Canberra. The Aussie team's a little bit off the pace compared to the rest of the competition. Two teams that are struggling to find their feet. Uh, the Waratahs had a nice rest last week, so I think they will come back strong. I think the Waratahs will shade this one. Yeah, me too. Now, our local derby, big game in South Africa, Bull Stormers. thought the Bulls played well in New Zealand. Bulls good for 65 minutes, and then the wheels start to come off. I think the Bulls at home are a different uh, kettle of fish. I think um, the Stormers will have their work cut out. Mm -hmm. Pollard with his long-range kicking, the ball flying up in the half felt. I think this is going to be quite a close game. Uh, I think maybe the Bulls. I'm going to lean towards the Bulls. Like the Bulls, I don't know. I just think the Stormers will pip it. Less travel, playing well. And the last game, if I was still in the competition, I'd be on the Crusaders to win at Ellis Park. Now, it is a Sunday lunchtime kickoff, so obviously uh, altitude will be a factor. Just think the Crusaders have too, much, too many guns for the Lions. The Crusaders came here for the final last year. Uh, if uh, Cocker Smith hadn't been sent off, I think the Lions would have won that game. But the form of the Lions at the moment, um, they made some changes last week to freshen the squad up against the Jaguars. They got beat. That's the third game in a row. Crusaders, free scoring team as well. Yeah. Too many uh, All Blacks in the team that can hurt you. I think the Crusaders will win this comfortably. Okay, your bet for the weekend, if you'd still been going in? I think the bet for the weekend will be the Hurricanes. Hurricanes, yeah. they will not have been on the Crusaders. Joining us now is our international columnist, Steve. You there with us? Steve, you there? Good morning. How's it going? Extra hour sleep with the clocks going back? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I still I still leave home at the same time, but it uh, gives me an hour in the office to get prepared. Oh, that's great news. Even better for us because the actual that hour from quarter to eight to quarter to ten kills us. At least quarter to nine, the midweek games are fine. But that. Uh... Yeah. No, I can understand that exactly. Steve, uh, championship massive weekend ahead. Easter weekend. Uh, your boys, Fulham? Yeah, 
tough game, tough game um, tomorrow away at Norwich. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Norwich have pretty much fallen out of the uh, playoff contention, but they're still a hard team to beat. Yeah. You know, they've drawn a lot of games, but they haven't lost many. So, you know, my heart says uh, an away win, but I think my head says probably a draw there. Mm-hmm. One team that uh, sneaked into the promotion, especially for six spot, is Millwall. I see they're unbeaten in 12. I know. I mean, they really have uh, been playing very well. They've had this incredible run of of um, six away wins in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, although admittedly they they've not played any of the top sort of six teams away, but even so, you know, they're making themselves very hard to beat. They've got um, you know on paper a couple of games against mid-table teams. They play uh, home tomorrow against Nottingham Forest. I mm-hmm. think that'll be a a good game, and then they play away at Ipswich, which I think is very winnable for them. So mm-hmm. they've certainly sort of brought themselves up into contention. They do finish with games again. They play Fulham, Middlesbrough and Aston Villa. So they've got some <laughs> tough games coming up. But, uh, you know, you know yourself, it, um, winning, you know, it, it becomes a good habit and, and they've, they've been doing that recently. Yeah. Big game of the weekend looks to be Middlesbrough Wolves. Yes. You know, I think that's going to, you know, we've been talking about Middlesbrough recently and, mm. and how they sort of come into a bit of form. And I think that's going to be a good test of their credentials. I mean, Wolves obviously are, are going to want to try and get a result there because, you know, just you know, they got that gap and another two or three wins and they're pretty much almost there. But I think, you know, I think there could be a bit of an upset here. I think Middlesbrough are pretty strong at the moment. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me if they pinch a win. Yeah, they won four of the last five home games, drew the other one, so I agree. Yeah. Now, the big other big game you'll, you'll obviously be following, the Cardiff Burton Albion. Any chance Burton can get a point off that? Uh, well, I think, it, it, although Burton uh, find themselves in the bottom three, yeah. um, their away form is, is, is more impressive than their home form. But I find it very difficult to, uh, to, to do anything other than a home win. I mean, Cardiff, by their own admission, are not playing well, mm. but they're just eking out results. And seven wins in a row, I think, speaks for itself. After that, Cardiff have got some tough, tougher games. So, obviously, we've got two lots of fixtures over the holiday, mm-hmm. and they play um, away at sort of Sheffield, West Sheffield United. So, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd be very surprised if there's anything other than a, a bank at home win for Cardiff there. Yeah, another tricky game that obviously affects Fulham is Hull City and Aston Villa. Yes, I mean, I think obviously Villa have had sort of two, two defeats in a row now. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to want to bounce back. But Hull City, you know, they're sort of fighting. I mean, their home, their home form has is, is not been that bad. They don't yeah. lose many at home. Yeah. I think that, uh, again, I'd, I'd be surprised if, uh, unless Villa really pick up some form, I wouldn't be at all surprised if Hull City hold them. OK. Well, we've gone for Aston Villa. You know, they've won five of the last seven away. I agree, they lost at Bolton their last yeah. game. But... Uh, yeah, I just think they've had an international break and sometimes the old campaigners like John Terry and Snodgrass and co maybe need the break, so it may help them. Yeah, but no, I think you're probably right. It's, uh, you know, but, uh, and it's quite possible that, I mean, the conditions of Bolton were very favourable for, mm-hmm. for playing for yeah. good football, but I think Villa know they have to, if they want to, to have any contention of, of, of an automatic place, yeah. they have to start winning their games. They've lost three of the last six, so you know, that isn't uh, promotion form. Now, the other game I'm worried about is uh, Derby Sunderland. Could this be the end of Sunderland? I know we spoke about it over the last few weeks. Well, I mean, they, you know, they've, you know, they're still, still only sort of six, seven points adrift. You know, once it gets any more than that, and I think yeah. I mean, they haven't won. You know, they haven't won in a number of games. Yeah, that's ten, so yeah. Derby, you know, obviously need to cement their uh, playoff position. So uh, unless there's, you know something untoward happens, I'd be very surprised if, if that's not a home win for Derby there. Yeah, and did. then, you know, as you say, within two or three games, Sunderland can find themselves so far adrift that, you know, they're gonna, it's going to be hard for them to, to, to come back. Yeah, I agree. Our boys Preston at Sheffield Wednesday, Steve. Can we upset the apple Yeah, cart? I mean, a t- tough game. And again, mm. Wednesday, one of these sort of teams who you're expecting to, to have a, a good season again and have struggled. But, yeah. uh, you know, always a hard team to beat at Hillsborough. I think... Um, you know, Preston's had a good win last time out. Uh, that could go either way. I, I can't see Preston losing. Yeah. But uh, whether or not a draw would be good enough for them, I'm not sure. No, but, definitely uh, not. I, I know we're unbeaten in 11 away from home, but, uh, you know, it's make or break, isn't it, Yeah. Well, I think it's so congested around that sort of sixth place downwards. Mm. Um, you know, sort of, you can put uh, any, you know, you know, if we think that Middlesbrough... Uh, might join the top four, then literally there could only be one place for about five or six teams. Yeah, correct. Um, you know, so, uh, to say, Millwall have... That's uh, Millwall, Sheffield United, Bristol City, Preston, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Sheffield and Bristol are just uh, 
so, so inconsistent, it's very hard to call with them. Uh, I mean, Bristol have obviously had a real downturn in form, uh, although they go to Barnsley, you know, yeah. Barnsley are struggling. You know, they can't afford to lose that on Barnsley, but, you know, Bristol, very inconsistent. And the same with Sheffield United. Mm. You really don't know what you're going to get with them. They, as we said before, they sort of win one and lose one. And that's a big game because sort of Brentford um, had playoff aspirations, and this yeah. might be that, you know, if they... Brentford don't win this one. I suspect that their playoff hopes are probably finished as well. Yarp Stum, I see uh, Paul Clement replaced him. Jeez, that was a big yes, move. Yes, I think we said I mentioned that last week. Yeah, you did. I, I sort of read that he was sort of favourite. Uh, look, we, we know that Yap Stam probably had to go. I mean, one win in 17 is just uh, appalling. It's not good enough, yeah. And Paul Clement, uh, you know, is coaching some big teams. When he came into Swansea last, last season, you know, he... Yeah. There was sort of an automatic bounce, and, and, and they got a few good results. Uh, and I guess you know Reading are looking for the same. I think there are still probably three worse teams than them, but they are only three points ahead of the uh, relegation zone. So they need to start picking up some points. I think that might that be a tough game. And the way the Queens Park Rangers played in the second half at Fulham two weeks ago, yeah. um, I don't think that's that's going to be an easy easy game for Paul Clement on his on his uh, first game. Yeah, I agree with you there. And the last but not least, Steve, Birmingham City under Gary Monk at home to Ipswich? Well, Birmingham had a good a good win at uh, home um, last yeah. time out. And I, I think, you know, maybe Gary Monk just might be the right sort of man just to sort of galvanise them. And, you know, they've got some good players there who just haven't been gelling as a team. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's uh, not a home win. Okay, Steve, thanks. Sir. Steve, uh, last one standing. I know you've sent me your pick. The 70 of you left. I know the bankers are slowly going. Uh, <laughs> Arsenal, good they best are. bit of the yeah, weekend. You know, there are you know, there are some tough games to call uh, mm. this, this weekend in the Premier League. So uh, you know, I, I mean, Huddersfield are very inconsistent. So you know, if Newcastle show any any sort of form, I, I, I'd be surprised if Newcastle didn't win that. You know, and Huddersfield for me, um, you know, I think they're still very much uh, in the mix. Uh, you know, go so, down. And I think the big game, obviously, at the bottom is going to be West Ham Southampton because you know neither can afford to lose that. Yeah. How do you see the Tottenham uh, Chelsea game going on Sunday? Well, it's it's you know it's going to be very tight. Uh, obviously, without Harry Kane, um, Chelsea just seem to be finding a little bit of form. Tottenham, as we know, haven't won at Stamford Bridge in the league. Uh, okay. You know, for. Uh, 20 something years yeah. I'd be surprised if uh, I've, I've actually got going for a home win there ok Steve thanks very much enjoy the weekend Pleasure. and we'll speak to you next week and good luck with your Absolutely. pick in the last one All standing right. take care all the best Bye. Steve yeah, Gav so there's your championship uh, preview for the weekend very tough league uh, 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 it's to hardest predict, league in the world to predict the games in that league uh, good luck to you uh, you can take any you get good there, value you get very good time. value but Nine times out of ten, you come stuck. <laughs> okay, we now go on to the, uh, the Premiership. And we start off with a game where I think there could be an upset in this game. Lunchtime kickoff, Crystal Palace versus Liverpool, Gav. Well, 16th versus third. If you looked at the games, you would think that this would be a game that Liverpool should surely win. Uh, they've got the player, Salah is in great form. I keep waiting for this guy to miss a couple of games mm -hmm. with no goals and see how Liverpool fare. But he, he's phenomenal at the moment. You've got to give players the credit. I think Liverpool will be too good for them. Yeah, I've got my doubts. You know, I remember Palace against Man United. The tunnel up should never have got beat against Tottenham. Spurs scored an injury time. Yeah, they beat Chelsea. You know, Man City. They should have beat Man City. Remember the guy missed a penalty and injury time. There's a you lot know, of pressure. Sorry, there's a lot of pressure on Crystal Palace yeah, to get a result. Sure. Of course, where they're sitting on the log, and I think mm -hmm. Liverpool. If they just bide their time, I think the chances will come for them. And I think with the pace of Salah yeah. to get him behind, I think Crystal Palace are going to battle to deal with him. Yeah, I think there's plenty of goals in this. I think our man onside, Ben Teke, could be. And it's also lunchtime kickoff off the international break. Liverpool play Man City on Wednesday. You know, they've got championship. They've got to get in the top four. But uh, I don't know. I think this has got a, a draw written all over it, you know. Second game, as Steve said, is the biggest pressurised game of the weekend. West Ham, Southampton. Both teams struggling out of form. If I had to have a bet on, on, on this game, I would have to think really long and hard. 17th versus 18th. Yeah. I think the, the momentum might be with Southampton with a new manager and Mark Hughes. Yeah. I think it might be a renewed energy in the team. West Ham, just can't believe this team is so far down the log, yeah. battling to score goals. 
I see a draw on this one, but again, I'm leaning a little bit towards Southampton to get a result. Yeah, only won one in 17, Southampton. I wasn't really impressed when they beat Wigan last week, but uh, you say the manager factor. West Ham, you can't have Patrice Evra and Zabaleta as your fullbacks. No, no. You know, I, I can't have them, but I think a draw, a big player, the fear of defeat. You know what happened the last time they played at, uh, at the stadium? I think we've spoken about Southampton before. They're a nice free-flowing team. They're nice, easy to watch on the hour. They pass the ball around nicely. I think with Mark Hughes' input, yeah. um, he's not going to be... Players are playing for places during the run-in. I'm leaning towards Southampton to get a result. Okay. A game I think should be quite an open affair. You know, Brighton, Leicester. Another game that uh, it's, it's a, can go either way. Brighton are pretty good at home. If you look at uh, Chris Hutton as the manager, we spoke about him again. He's, yeah. he's a decent manager. The team and the players that he has, I think at home, they. for me, this game is a draw. It's 12th versus 8th. Uh, I would be leaning towards the draw in this game. Yeah, I like Leicester. You know, open guy. I don't know how Vardy's come back from the international, whether he's carrying a knock or two. You know, but Brighton have only lost once at home in the last nine games. That was to Chelsea. They got beat 4-0. So, well, I just think that uh, Leicester, you know, Morris, a lot of creativity. I just think they'll have a little bit too much for it's Brighton. It's going to come down to the individual flair of the players on the day. Yeah. Like you say, they've, Leicester have got two quality players in Morris yeah. and... Uh, Morris and Vardy. That's, and Vardy. that's my pick. Now, United, I know everyone's been screaming about the performances, and I agree, it's been woeful. Surely we can't not to get a can't result miss. against We Swansea. can't miss, yeah. If we want to hold on to that second position and, and try and yeah. pull away from Liverpool, if we're expecting Liverpool to drop some points, Man United should be far too strong. And it's good to see that Pogba scored during the week. Yeah, so it might get his confidence up a little bit. But United, at home, yeah. you wouldn't even can't contemplate this being losing. Yeah, that's strange. We've lost two games. I think it's in the last 40 at home in the league, and both were to Man City. Anyway, we go on to a big game for all our last one standing punters. Newcastle, Huddersfield. I think there'll be plenty of boys that have chosen the top teams on Newcastle this weekend. Like you say, everybody's falling by the wayside. Yeah. They've got to look for something. I think Newcastle at home, if you take their last result and you bring them against Huddersfield, who are battling to score goals, I think yeah. there can be a lot of tickets on Newcastle. Yeah. And Newcastle could be one of the best bets of the weekend. Yeah, yeah, they won the last two home games. One was Man United. I just worry about the international break. You know, they were going well, have the break. And Huddersfield, you know, try and keep it tight. But uh, for me, you've got to fancy Newcastle to beat. I think with the, the 55,000 Geordies in the crowd, yeah. I mean, they've got a beautiful stadium. The, the, the supporters pack it in. That's the, the 12th man for them. I think they'll carry them over the line. I think yeah, they're expecting think, them to uh, win. Yeah, I think they'll win easily too. Watford, Bournemouth. Another draw match. Uh, 11th versus 10th, so the games are getting close. The position, the, top, the table is close. Watford started the season and progressed through the season pretty well. Then they hit a bit of a slump. Uh, Bournemouth, they also went through a patch and they found their form. I, I'm battling to split these two and I think uh, it'll be a draw in this game. Yeah, you know, Watford won the last three to two home games. The last two away games have got destroyed and both of them... Arsenal buried them and Liverpool buried them. You know, Bournemouth, they just give too many goals. I think there'll be goals in this game. You know, Bournemouth, they are 10th in mid-table. No real chance of going down. So hopefully it's an open game. West Brom, who haven't won in 29 league games at home to Burnley. I can't believe they're favourites. No, I can't, I can't have West Brom. Um, we always have that saying, the team's out of form. Stay away from them. Yeah. Um, Burnley, I think, will shade this. Um, Purely the fact that they seventh in the log versus twentieth in a team that's going nowhere. Mm. The manager's under huge pressure, even though he came into the team late. I can't see them getting a result. They're just free fall. Yeah, I see Burnley as the new Stoke and West Brom of old. You know, well organised at the back, big centre forward, hard working team. Nineteen to ten. I think the draw's a big player. Winning draw's a good bet for me. I saw five to ten. That's in one of our bets. Yeah, I definitely. just can't have a team. Haven't won in nearly thirty league games, and they favourite. Yeah, win and draw, you get 5-10, to ten, win and draw Burnley. I think I'll be snapping yeah, that. Well, that's what we jumped into. Uh, Everton, Man City. Well, this is not an easy game for Man City. People are saying the, the, the season is over, Man City will whip them. They're coming off international break, and people don't realise you know, the, the, the energy levels get sapped from you from playing these type of matches. They're way to Everton. We'll be waiting for them. Yeah. Uh, the crowd will be behind them. They'll roll their sleeves up. This one's going to... Could be a, a tough game for Man City to win. Yeah, I agree. It won't be easy. I've been to Goodison. It's a tight pitch. And one thing those scousers demand, they want effort. 
Their home record, they only lost one in ten. That was to Man United. Yeah, in the English Premiership, nobody gives you a quarter. And I think the, you don't have to be motivated for this game. It should just automatically be there for you. You should be able to arrive at the ground fully focused on a Man City team who you want to get one over. I think Everton could be, a win and draw could be a, a bit of yeah, a lurker good there. Value. The, and ironically, the only game that Man City didn't win at home in the league was at Everton early on when they drew one all. Arsenal, Stoke. Stoke haven't won in 10 away games. They look woeful. Now they've got to go for it. You know, cause yeah, they're going to go for it and Arsenal's going to pick them off, I think. Ozil in the midfield, is, he seems to be coming back to some type of form. I think Arsenal, I won't even look past it. It's a short conversation, Arsenal to win this comfortably. Yeah, it should be. The only hassle I have with Arsenal mm. is they tend to throw a shocker. But uh, Europa League, that victory over AC Milan, you can see the bounce is back in their step and I agree, Gav. I think yeah, they're absolute good, certainties. Very good side, Arsenal. They're just like you say, they go through these patches in the season and... Mm. The supporters shake their heads. They can't believe what happens with them, but Arsenal too good for them. Yeah, I agree. Now, the big game of the weekend, Chelsea-Tottenham. And as Steve said, they haven't won in the last 29 games at Stamford Bridge. But in saying that, they're unbeaten in 12, whereas Chelsea, I think Courtois, he pulled out the Belgian team. They've got a few injuries. I know Spurs haven't got Harry Kane, but can you see them upsetting them? No, I think I, I really like Chelsea. I think Chelsea at home, formidable team to beat. And they're tough to break down. The manager's under pressure to get a result, a big result, and this will be a big result and a big scalp for them. I'm leaning towards Chelsea, Chelsea in the draw. Yeah. Um, like you say, Harry Kane missing from the team. They just miss a bit of a link when they're going forward. Uh, but Spurs too, I mean, not a bad side. Yeah, but good team. Both teams laced with international players, so yeah. no one can complain that they had international duty because most players have played during the week. But yeah. I'm leaning towards Chelsea as a Yeah, I just runner. think Courtois could be a big loss. That Willy Caballero, he was the goalkeeper that came on for Romero in Argentina. He led in five, and uh, so I don't think his confidence is too high. Obviously, a lot of good players going forward. I can see a draw with this. Five points, Spurs are ahead of them. So Spurs avoid defeat here. Yeah, that's almost Chelsea gone. Oh, but I can okay. see a one-all draw here. I hope, uh, hope there's a lot more goals. Yeah, but, I, can't uh, see, I, I don't see Chelsea getting beat. So maybe, again, win and draw for the players out there. Okay. We now go on to our local Ned Bank Challenge Cup quarterfinals. We start off with one of our local boys on Saturday, Maritzburg Bloom Celtic. Hard to beat at Harry Guala. Very hard to beat. Um, they've done a phenomenal job at Maritzburg United this year. I mean, this, this manager of this team should be given a new yeah, contract. Been brilliant. Uh, extension immediately. The management should be really behind and pushing him. They're third in the league. Um, doing exceptionally well. Bloomfield and Celtic blow hot and cold. Yeah. But just something's telling me that this game is going to go a 90-minute draw and then it'll go into extra time. Yeah, I think uh, that, cup yeah. matches, I think it could be a free-flowing cup match as well. But I think United will end up shading them. So I would go United in the draw, even though that they, they, they've won their last five, drew one, last one. Yeah. I think they're a formidable team back in their home patch. Yeah, I actually watched the league encounter. It was a Friday night game. There was nothing else on TV and it was ebb and flow with touching and then Maritzburg scored and after that Celtic went missing ended up winning 4-0 yeah first game in these cup competitions as you know Gab is always key you always know if done. you get it obviously you can relax the draw's a big player in all these uh, cup games it's a fear of defeat as opposed to trying to win 100%. now fancy Maritzburg to go through but a draw is obviously a big player in this one yeah, a lot of you get into the stage of the competition where you don't want to lose because yes. there's too much at stake the prize money is huge and some of the away teams might be sitting out their stall to look for the, the extra yeah. time. Um, like you say, Marisburg United are very good at home. Very good at home. Um, but I'm just leaning towards the draw. Okay. Don't blame you. Ubuntu, Cape Town, Free State Stars. The Ubuntu knocked out Polokwane City and they knocked out Amazulu. Well, I had a huge bet on Amazulu that night. Yeah. Uh, I switched on and I was 2 0 down in a matter of minutes. Amazulu did everything but score that night. Free State Stars having to travel down to Cape Town. This team, if you underestimate them, they're going to hurt you. Yep. Uh, there's no motivation that these guys need. They're just going to be waiting and ready for you. Uh, Free State Stars have to come and play. Um, if they wait and they think they're going to sit back, they're going to come unstuck. Again, I'm looking towards the draw here. Yeah, it could also be another extra town game. One thing about Ubuntu Cape Town, they do score goals. I know they concede them. But uh, I think Free State Stars will go through. But if I was having a bet, I'd back Ubuntu Cape Town to score first. Because you know the, these uh, the first division teams, they're going to come out fired up. Yeah, they've got a couple of young whippets in the team. I was watching them yeah. against Amazulu. They, they chased everything down. They really put a lot of effort into it. And I'm expecting the same performance from them tomorrow. Yeah. They're going to chase everything. And Free State Stars need to be on their game. If, 
if these youngsters score first, yeah. the game is going to be on. It could be an open affair after that, but I'm leaning towards the draw. Okay. Now, a game for some unknown reason is being played in PE, the Nelson Mandela Bay Stadium, Kaiser Chiefs Baraka. Now, Gav, if I had to tell you, Kaiser Chiefs have played 24 league games. How many goals have they scored in 24 league games? Well, a team like Chiefs should be scoring in the 30s, early 40s, but I'm led to believe it's somewhere in the 20s. It's 20 league goals they've scored. 20 league game goals for a team of Kaiser Chiefs stature. Yeah. It's not acceptable. The fans must be pulling their hair out. Uh, Steve Compella must be under pressure for this game. Uh, he has to win something. I think he's yeah. been there two, two and a half years now at, at Kaiser Chiefs. A uh, team oh. like Chiefs need to win silverware. Their supporters demand silverware. Yeah. Um, if they don't get a result against Barocca, I think Steve Compel is putting himself under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I can see them sneaking in this 1-0, you know. But I like Barocca. They have a go. Young team. But, you know, the experience, I think, will tell in the end. And you've, got, you've got a team of Chiefs who's very structured and organised. And you get a team of Barocca, some young guys who just love their football and will chase right. the ball down. And sometimes it's hard to play against these guys because they don't really... Uh, form a pattern of play. Yeah. Um, but they seem to have the number on Chiefs. They seem to get yeah. a few goals against Chiefs. So, yeah. And Chiefs not scoring goals. It's, it's going to be yeah. a tight game. But I'm also expecting Chiefs to get through. Yeah, they've played six times. Chiefs have only won once. Strange Isn't decision it? to play in PE. Yeah. I would thought at this late stage in the competition, you take the game to your fans. Yeah. I'm saying that Chiefs are around the country. Yeah, but I mean, have it in Johannesburg, unless they're thinking that Barocca has to travel yeah. and they're not very good on the road. So maybe that'll also play in the hands of, of Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. Chiefs for me just to squeak it. Now, the big <clears> game <throat> is obviously Cape Town City, Mamelodi Sundowns. Benny's team, they're hot and cold. They either win, they get beat. Sundowns going well. Unbeaten in 10, don't concede many goals. They haven't had CAF Champions League game. I think it starts in two weeks' time. Sundowns is my team. I've always liked Sundowns. Uh, my first game was against Sundowns. And from then, I've always supported them. Very good side. They've got some really good players, talented players. But the game's played in Cape Town. And yep. Benny's got a good record. Um, he's, he's really done well with this team. Yeah. Uh, I always thinking that maybe this week will be their turn where they get a bit of a hiding, but they bounce back. Mm -hmm. I know Gavin doesn't want to see the, the Cape Town side near his team because they seem to get a hiding from them all the time. But Sundowns, this is going to be a cracking game. I yeah. think the fans need to get down to the stadium and watch this. Yeah. This could be two of our two best teams in the country. Yeah. And I'm expecting a spectacle from both of them. I think there could be goals in this game. Uh, if I had to put my head on the block, uh, I would go with Sundowns maybe 2-1, 3-1. Yeah, I think they're the better team, but of all the games that there could be the upset, I think this is the game. You know, Benny will have his boys fired up. You know, these big games, I mean, there's a lot of organisation that takes place behind the scenes. Players are getting prepared, teams are getting structured, your training sessions are worked around, countering players, who's going to play well, you know, nullify players in the team. And I know the Sundowns boys up front, they've got some phenomenal players who can score goals. Cape Town City, you've got the home ground. I think it'll be a nice crowd in yeah, there. There'll be a big crowd there, that's uh, for sure. I think it's uh, give me a bit of goosebumps thinking about a big game like this, want to play a game. Yep. I think Sundowns will shade them. Yeah, three o'clock on Sunday should be a cracker in Cape Town. We now go on to our soccer exotics for the weekend, and we start off with the soccer six. It's the PSL one with a couple of English and French games thrown in. I've gone uh, Maritzburg United, win and draw at home against Celtic. I've gone with uh, Free State Stars, win and draw at Ubuntu. Because I've only had the field job the third game, West Ham, Southampton, but I've had to pick uh, one of the two, so I've sided with the home team. Now, Dijon, Marseille is an interesting game. Dijon are way behind them, but their last 10 home games, they've won eight and drawn two. Marseille, I saw them in the Europa League. That's Dimitri Payet's team. They're third, they're going well, but I can sense an upset here, especially with the Europa League coming on Thursday for Marseille. I think Aston Villa have to win. They've won five of the last seven away games. They've got to get a result at Hull. In the last game, I've gone Kaiser Chiefs against Barocca. Win and draw, and of course, you won 92. The English soccer six. I've gone the field with Brighton versus Leicester. A bank in Man United to beat Swansea. I think Newcastle will be too good for Huddersfield. Watford, I've gone the field with Bournemouth. You know, Bournemouth are free-flowing. They're safe, nothing to lose. And I've gone the away wins in the draw. I've gone Burnley to get a positive result at West Ham. And I've thrown the draw in with Everton at Man City. The Manchester-Liverpool derby between the fans is, is not, not the nicest games to witness. But if you want to halve your firm, obviously bank in Man City. But uh, we've thrown the draw in looking for the upset. Our soccer 10. I've gone Birmingham City. While I like them, we like, I've, got another, I've got three bankers. So I've thrown the draw in here. 
I've gone Birmingham City, win and draw at home against Ipswich. I've gone Leicester, win and draw at Brighton. I think Man United will be too good for Swansea. Likewise, Newcastle, I think she will be too good for Huddersfield. I've gone Watford, win and draw at home against Bournemouth. Second page, I've gone Burnley, win and draw at Burnley. I've gone the field, sorry, win and draw at West Brom. I've gone the field with West Ham, Southampton. I've gone Man City, win and draw at Everton. A bank at Aston Villa. Now, Bayern Munich look obvious bankers, but they've got Champions League in midweek. They're 20 points clear, I think, with seven games to go. So the manager's come out, and he said he's going to rotate his players. I've thrown the draw in, just looking for the upset. If you want to halve your perm, obviously bank at Bayern Munich, and it comes to 192. The Soccer 13, we've done our usual five bankers and eight win and draws. I've gone Man City win and draw at Everton. Leicester, win and draw at Brighton. I've gone Man United to beat Swansea. Newcastle to beat Huddersfield. I've sided with the home team Watford in a draw against Bournemouth. I've gone Burnley, win and draw at West Brom. West Ham, win and draw at Southampton. The second page, I've gone Birmingham, win and draw at Ipswich. I've banked Aston Villa to beat Hull. It's a League One game between Portsmouth and Walsall. Portsmouth are going well, but I've have thrown the draw in there at Walsall, away from home. Their results have been a little bit inconsistent. Now, Juventus, AC Milan. Juventus are only one point clear in the league, and while they play Real Madrid on Tuesday, they've got to have a full go to try and win the league. So I've, I've banked them. They don't get beat at home in a hurry, so I've banked Juventus. I've thrown the draw in with Bayern Munich and Dortmund. Now, the Paris Saint-Germain Monaco is a French League Cup game. They're playing at a neutral venue, but Paris Saint-Germain, they've won both meetings with Monaco this year, and I think they'll be too good. 384s are per, but obviously if you want to have it, banker one thing. Now, our English quartet, I've banked Newcastle, I think will be too good for Huddersfield. I've gone Arsenal, I think will be too good for Stoke City, who haven't won in 10 away games. Now, Birmingham City under Gary Monk, the ex-Swansea manager, I think they'll be, they'll be too good for, for Ipswich. And Aston Villa... 18 to 10, I saw, I thought it was a great price. They've got a win at Hull City. I think they'll be too strong. Now, win and draw, I've gone Crystal Palace. I thought 15 to 10 was a good bet. Lunchtime kickoff. I know a lot of people think I'm insane, but I fancy them to get a good result against Liverpool. Burnley, I see don't, not getting beat at uh, West Brom. I like Tottenham. I think that's got a draw nailed all on it. Tottenham, Chelsea. Dijon, as I said earlier, the last 10 home league games, they've won eight and drawn two. So I've sided with them at a nice price. And Real Batiste, they're away at Getafe on Monday. They were also a good price. Seven to ten win and draw. They've won five of the last seven away games. 3,300 to 200. Uh, both teams to score quartet. It's all premiership teams. I've gone Palace, Liverpool, Brighton, Leicester, Everton, Man City, and Chelsea, Tottenham. That worked out at 10 to 1. Uh, over two and a half goal squad. I went Brighton, Leicester, Watford, Bournemouth, and two Spanish games, Atletico Bilbao, Salta Vigo, and Atletico Madrid versus Deportivo Lava Corona, 2,800 to 200. Uh, Spanish quartet, I went Girona, who've won their last six home league games to get the better of a poor Levante team. I think Barcelona, while it's a tough game at Seville, you know, Messi obviously didn't play. He's saving himself for this game. They win the next few games. The league's over in the Liga. And I think Arbor, who are a good team at home, the only teams that have beat them there recently have been Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, and Barcelona. And I watched the game when they beat Sevilla 5-1. So I think they'll be too good for a real Sociedad team who have taken three points from the last 10 away games. And the last, uh, the other last one is both teams to score Atletico Bilbao against Salta Vigo. It worked out just over 11-1. to And a six on Exa, I've gone Arsenal to beat Stoke City. I've gone Aston Villa to win that... Uh, Crikey, the name escapes me to win at Hull City, sorry. I've gone Barcelona to beat Seville. I've gone Real Madrid to win at Las Palmas. Juventus to beat AC Milan. And Napoli to win at Sassuolo. The last two going for the league title. 18.5 to 1, 3,700 to 200. Gav, I know you've been working out your bets. Let me have it. Well, I've been looking at your bets. I mean, they look, they look pretty decent this week, yeah. especially the last one. It looks very appetizing. Well, my best bets are the PSL. It's yeah. PS Pinamarisburg United to draw. Three United state stars to draw. To draw. 22 to 10, That's yeah. both to draw. Uh, and the rugby, I like the Hurricanes and the Blues to win. Okay. I think they both teams are free scoring. Uh, the Sharks not playing too well. And my third bet would be Juventus to win and Arsenal to win. 
Yeah. And then you could mix all six up yeah, if you want to. We've said about 15 to 1. We looked a bit earlier. I agree. Yeah. You know, I like that. Uh, I it's a nice bet. Uh, some, some, be some good bets this weekend. Um, don't get carried away and play too many in your bets. Yeah. Two or three teams and then maximize your bet. Yeah, the pressure's on this week. You know, there's only seven league games in the Premiership to go. Pressure on the Championship, as Steve said. It's Friday, Monday. So Very good luck to all the guys that are still standing in the, in yeah. the bets. Uh, good luck to the two in the rugby and to the 30 or 40 of us in the soccer. Yeah. Have a good pick this weekend. Well, I think a lot of pressure will be on Arsenal and Newcastle this week. But from you, uh, sorry, for, for me at uh, Onside SA and Gavin Radford, thanks for coming in again. Have a good punting weekend.